something wicked this way comes. By the looks of it, Aaron is about to set the world on fire. With his unusual cool and his weird reaction to Sasha's death in Episode 8, the guy is on the verge of a total mental breakdown. Has Aaron embraced the dark side? If so, can Mikasa and Armin bring him back and stop the upcoming carnage? In today's Attack on Titan video, I will discuss the founding titan that sleeps within Eren. First, I'll talk about why Eren needs Zeke to activate it, and finally, what his endgame is. Now, get ready for the rumbling. Saying that the latest Attack on Titan episode, adequately named Assassin's Bullet, was shocking is an understatement. <laughs> While Aaron cracking open the Warhammer Titan's host like a coconut made me both delighted and terrified at the same time, the last few minutes of the episode were full of surprises. I both loved and hated all of it for obvious reasons. Of all the people, the show had to take away everyone's favorite potato girl. And she died in the most simple yet horrible way possible, by one single bullet. While I will forever hate Gabby for that, let's move away from Sasha for a second and focus on what happened next. Minutes after she was gone and Aaron had his weird little, and not to mention borderline psychotic laughing moment, it was revealed that Zeke was in the airship. But he wasn't a prisoner, it was all planned, and just like that, Gabby's world shattered just like when Aaron found out about Annie back in the day. But what is the guy who looks like a university professor doing there, and why didn't Levi finally take care of him? The answer lies in his royal blood. To activate the Founding Titan, Eren needs to be in contact with a direct descendant of the Ymir lineage. After seeing how Eren wanted to uh, Kirby every other intelligent Titan during the Liberio attack, I have a feeling things won't end well for the Beast Titan. But before I get to the plan they created together and get spoilerish, let's get back to Season 2 and 3 when Eren, still an annoying brat like Gabby, awoke the power of the Founding Titan. One of the main features that makes the Founding Titan so wanted by the Warriors is that its host can control all Titans. Every single one of them. But to do so, its host has to be a direct descendant of Ymir, who, according to legends, made a pact with the devil to become an oversized monster lady. But manga readers know that this is propaganda that has been spread by the Marley Empire. Now, I won't say any more about it, but as you know, Hajime Isayama loves plot twists that twist into more plot twists. Now, Eren used the powers of the Founding Titan on three occasions. Two times in the anime so far, and another one in the manga. Let's rewind a bit and go back to Season 2, Episode 12, when Eren totally friendzoned poor Mikasa. While Hannes was being devoured by the Smiling Titan and pure Titans were rushing to snack on the two young soldiers, Eren and Mikasa had one of those slow-motion moments with cuts to purple flowers, and to top it all, it all happened during Golden Hour. We almost got a sweet kiss from the two until Eren got up and decided to high-five the Smiling Titan. As we learn later on in the series, the Smiling Titan who gulped Mama Jaeger was actually the royal Dina Fritz, Zeke's mother. After the Titan took a step back, Eren punched in the air in hopes of achieving I'm not quite sure exactly what. Was he trying to airbend? Yep, yep. Anyway, that also worked for reasons, and pure Titans came rushing to eat the Smiling Titan. Eren then screamed his lungs out like he always does, but this time, Reiner, as the Armored Titan, obeyed him by running in the opposite direction. It seemed that Eren could control all Titans only through speech. Remember the scene where Queen Historia gave Eren his medal at the end of the season? Well, he kissed her hand and some sparks flew, which activated the Founding Titan's memories, or to be more precise, Eren's father Grisha's. With his best nanny face, Eren just stood there, dumbfounded. So far, we know that the Founding Titan can do two things. Control Titans, and give access to the previous owner's memories. While it goes way beyond that, let's figure out why he needs Zeke since he already has Historia. The third time Eren uses the Founding Titan's power brings us into manga spoiler territory. Zeke has a plan for the future of the Eldian people. He wants to make them sterile forever. The goal of what he calls the unimaginatively named Euthanasia Plan is simple. Make all living Eldians incapable of reproduction and let the race die out. 
Having been portrayed by more than one Marleyan in the past, Eren didn't flinch when he met Ymir inside the path and enslaved Zeke within himself, making him able to use the Founding Titan permanently. The manga reveals how the Founding Titan's powers can allow him to see into the past and future, but also to influence past events when he pushed his father Grisha to kill the Rice family as his present self. After playing with the space-time continuum and making a mess of it, he teams up with Ymir and becomes a nasty-looking mega-giant skeleton titan and unleashes all colossal titans from the walls, directing them towards Marley and beyond. The rumbling has begun. With Falco becoming a flying titan, the manga has shown us that it's still full of surprises. Do you think there's more to the Ackermans than being super soldiers? I have a feeling that we haven't seen the full extent of Levi and Mikasa's powers just yet. Alright, I'll leave you on that. Let's talk after the next episode.